I've got here a really good range of AUK rare earth magnets. Smallest ones, three mil by six mil, largest one, 19 by three. The bigger the magnet, the stronger they are. And they are incredibly strong. That's some 12 mil thick timber and you can see that it's actually grabbing all the way through that. We might use rare earth magnets in our furniture making. We get some big old fashioned magnets you might have got from B&Q. I mean, they're a bit lumpy looking. Over time also, those big magnets lose their magnetism. If you ever want to rejuvenate them, stick a rare earth magnet on the back of it and it'll re-liven up the old magnet rather than to throw the whole lot away and try and find a new one to replace it. Otherwise, for doors and drawers, and anything you want to put into position, much better is to use a rare earth magnet because they're really quite small. They look quite attractive, but if you don't want to see them, what we can also do is drill into the surface of your back of your door or your doorstop. You can either leave them so you can physically see them, or you can actually cover over them either with a bit of a, a plug, or you can do it with veneer or you can do it with leather. If you do it with leather also, your door doesn't slam shut. You get much more of a sort of soft feel to it. You can either match up a pair of magnets, so you've got a really, really strong grip, or you just do one magnet to another fitting you've already got, like a push to open fitting. You can either put that onto a normal little plate or you can put it onto a magnet, which gives even a stronger hold. But make sure you get the polarity around the right way. If you don't, you'll never get the door to actually close, it'll hold it off. So make sure you get it around the right way is what we're looking for. We'll also use them around the workshop on our tools, perhaps on our pillar drill or my mortiser, just to hold the chuck key or any of the bits that we might have there, which we want to keep near that bit of kit. If I'm not using my bandsaw for a few days, I like to take the tension off it. It'll make your bandsaw last a lot longer. Trouble is when you come back a few days later, you might forget. So I like to have a little rare earth magnet stick a little sign on there, and I know exactly what to do next time. If you've dropped components somewhere you can't quite reach, get yourself a rare earth magnet, stick it on the back of your tape measure, and you can get into those awkward spots, or maybe you've got something which you know is somewhere in the dust. You can soon pick them back up again. Also, if you've got something in the dust and you know you've lost something in there somewhere, and you want to come and clean up later on, take a rare earth magnet, super glue it to the outside of your extractor, you can pick up all the dust and then you'll find the nut won't be lost up inside the bag. Also, I might use them on stops that I use on the machines as well. So I've made a little wooden stop block up here and I've drilled it out and I'm gonna stick into there some rare earth magnets. Then what that's gonna do is stick onto my cast iron beds for stops and I'm doing on the bandsaw or the table saw. When you have one of these stops, plain a little chamfer around the outside or you could route a little rebate. What you don't want is dust collecting against that flat surface because what will happen, your piece of timber won't come up against a proper stop. It'll start hitting on the dust and start working its way away. So the chamfer's going to help that. Or put a screw in the end, and then also your timber then is going to contact the screw one position contact. And if you want to make a fine adjustment, undo the screw a bit and it'll shorten your piece. Put the screw back in, it'll get a bit longer. Or we could just use a wooden dowel I put in there. That also can be a point stop. The advantage of the wooden dowel also what you can do is you can actually put a saw cut through it and you can have it so your bandsaw blade sits within the dowel if you've got to do some very, very short stopped work. I want to do show you how to actually glue some of these magnets in there and what we're going to use them for around the workshop. When we're using the magnets, we've got to make sure we get the polarity right, otherwise they're going to push away rather than pull towards each other. It's amazing how strong they are. These ones I've actually marked up with a red pen, so I know which side the polarity is. But if you've got a lot of them you're going to work with, what you might want to do is all set them up actually on something like a spatula first. So if I just drag that one up, I've got that red side to the top, but I can put them in there and push them up here. Some of them have got a little kind of rubber washer between them just to try and keep them separate. I've got all four of those, the polarity, the same way around. If I'm gonna glue these into one of my stop blocks, probably worth giving us a bit of a sand up first, and I'll sand them up actually on the red side that I've got, which makes sure they're gonna really glue into your block. So if you wanna roughen up this surface so you're gonna get a good glue into your block, you could use a little Dremel or a grinder possibly. Otherwise you could use, I've got here a block, and I've just double-sided sticky tape some coarse set paper to them. We could use that to kind of rough up the face, or you could take them off that, 
again go with the face that you put the red on and hold that onto the block. For this size magnet that's a fairly easy thing to do. For the smaller magnets they can be a little bit trickier to hold or you could just use them on a bit of paper on the bench again just to roughen them up. If we're going to get these uh, magnets glued into our timbers probably worth putting on some gloves you don't want to be sticking yourself to it as well. Either we can use a super glue or a two-part epoxy aerodite is going to be a great thing. So I'll just put myself a bit of glue in the bottom here. I pre-drilled these nice and snug to the magnet. Make sure you've got it on the right way around that you've sanded it and that is going to go into the bottom of there nice and snug. Same again nice and snug. You want to push them down, get them nice and flat. What you could do is use a block to push them down with, but make sure you've got something like some parcel tape on there. Otherwise, you're going to stick your block to it as well. We've got the polarity the same on them both. And let's just get them so they're nicely flushed up. Just need to make sure you've kind of squeezed the excess glue out. We're nice and flush them. Shouldn't need to hold the cramp on there for long. Same thing for the epoxy. So just got to mix that up. This is a five minute epoxy aerodite, so it should go off obviously nice and quick. When you're mixing up your epoxy, try not to get this one inside the other, otherwise you'll find the whole thing will start going off in your cap. Similar amounts, quantities for both of the halves. Get it a little bit mixed up. I'm going to get a decent amount then down into the bottom of our pre-drilled hole. A bit around the sides won't do any harm. Again I've got the reasons I've got it still on the spatula so I know where the polarity is. I can see where I've done my sanded face and also it's got my red line on there so we can use it from there just to find that and pop him in. Same for the other. Move him up to the top maybe you can see him. Just helps you line him up. Again little block on there Cramp that one down. A little bit of pressure. The aerodite is a little bit thicker, so if you get too much aerodite in there, you could find it basically almost hydraulically pushes it back out again. So you might want to leave your clamp on there a little bit longer. Otherwise, release the clamp. Looks like I haven't got too much on there, it hasn't spilled out everywhere, but if it has spilled out and made a mess, Meths will just wipe off that excess and just get it a bit cleaned up. Leave it in there for a bit of time and then we're good to go with those on our machines. The magnets for a stop are really good, but if you're doing a lot of heavy work, you could find you end up pushing that out of the way. To stop that happening, put a bit of our AUK anti-slip mat on first, stick that to there and then it's a lot more rigid. If you want to cut some of these short bits of timber off, it's far too short to try and hold on the sliding table you've got no backup here and things are going to move so what we do is set up a stop on the other side of the blade so we can push up against a fence and then we can cut off of this side of the blade but if you put it on against a continuous long fence what's going to happen as your timber goes through past the saw it can twist it therefore gets longer it's going to jam against the saw and you're going to get an almighty kickback so what you're best to do is set up just another block of timber and use that as an end stop but have this bit of timber drawn back away from the front of the saw blade so once you've actually cut your timber off to length it doesn't get trapped it's free to basically fall away from the saw blade and much much safer and the best way to hold it on there is with a pair of magnets and then you're going to try and cramp it it's holding on there while you're cutting your bits off the length if you're interested in the products, look at us at woodworkersworkshop.co.uk, otherwise follow us on our social media.